This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So in today's video, I will be making some mercury, which is an extremely interesting element and despite lying near the bottom of the periodic table and being a heavy and toxic metal, it has some very cool properties. One of them is that mercury is the only metal that's liquid at room temperature and just this makes me really want to have some. Apart from mercury, there's also a different liquid element which is the bloodlet halogen bromine, which on its own is really dangerous. There are also other elements that are pretty close to being liquid at room temperature, like gallium or cesium, but they all have their downsides, and mercury is undoubtedly the coolest of them all. It is so cool in fact, that for thousands of years, humans have been really fascinated by it, to the point where they even use it as a toy, a medicine, or as a life-extending elixir, and its colorful compounds have been used as paints or in cosmetics, which didn't end up too well, because mercury, despite being so beautiful, is really toxic, which many people unfortunately experienced, because humans found out about mercury's toxicity not too long ago. Ok, so now that I explained a little bit about what mercury is, I can start making it, and this is the point where the first of many issues start to arise, because as it turns out, mercury is really hard to get for the average person. Due to everyone knowing its toxicity, it is heavily regulated, and while not illegal, hardly anyone sells a source of it at a reasonable price, and that was the main thing that kept me back from doing this project for a very long time, because it has been on my to-do list for pretty much as long as I know that Mercury exists. Fortunately, not so long ago, I got the once in a lifetime opportunity to get some Mercury from one of my sponsors, for which I am very thankful. If you also want to get some high quality chemicals or equipment, you can check out BM Chemistry, they have a lot of cool stuff that normally is really hard to get, so I recommend you to check out their shop, to which I provided a link in the description. Anyway, the chemical that I ended up getting is something called the mercury 2 chloride or mercury chloride, which just so happens to be one of the most toxic mercury compounds out there due to it being water soluble. It also has other fun properties such as being corrosive, calcinogenic and very bad for the environment. Due to that, I will have to employ a lot of safety measures so I don't die, and even with this problem somewhat figured out, I have to solve an even bigger one, which is how to turn the mercury chloride back into mercury metal. You see, there's already been a great deal of good videos on making mercury from various compounds, like the naturally occurring mercury sulfide known as cinnabar, or mercury oxide, but no one has really done it with the mercury chloride. That's probably because no one has been in a situation like I do, and a lot of people actually made mercury chloride, because it is a useful reagent in some synthesis, and no one really had to revert it back to mercury. So I have to come up with something new, and what I have to do essentially boils down to reducing the plus 2 oxidation state the mercury is in as the mercury chloride to the zero oxidation state, which is just mercury metal. There are actually quite a few ways to do that, but the one that I wanted to go with is just a simple single displacement reaction, which would make use of the fact that mercury is quite unreactive, and to get it out of the salt form, I just have to expose it to a more reactive metal, which would take the chlorine atoms and free up the mercury while being pretty straightforward and clean. As the more reactive metal I choose copper, because it is pretty easy to get, and I saw a video by Codis Lab who used it to reduce mercury nitrate to elemental mercury, so I thought that it would work the same for my mercury chloride. To test it out, 
I now had to make a DIY mercuric chloride reducing contraption, but before I could do that, I have to put some safety gear on, because this project is by far the most dangerous one that I had ever attempted, and I wanted to ensure that I actually survive to make more chemistry videos. For my PPE, I used a gas mask capable of removing mercury vapors, along with a double layer of nitrile gloves that I wore almost all the time. I also had my film hood running for the whole duration of this project to catch any mercury vapors, and I got this big plastic container to do most of the dangerous stuff in to prevent a mercury spill, which normally would be just disastrous, because spilled mercury has a tendency to split apart into thousands of little beads that go everywhere and are almost impossible to clean up. Ok, so to construct the mercury making contraption, I first had to find some copper, and unfortunately my metal stash was almost completely devoid of it, all I had left were just some old copper wires covered in a thin layer of a very rigid plastic insulation, I couldn't use them because the copper had to be completely clean. After some searching, I found this old piece of cable that looked like it had some delicious pure copper in it, and to check if this was the case, I got rid of the insulation, and fortunately, this copper was just the thing I was looking for. You may wonder why do we have to use copper, because for example steel, which is mostly made out of iron, is also more reactive than mercury, it is also way cheaper, and has the added benefit of being able to resist being amalgamated by the mercury, which is also a very useful thing that I will explain later, so steel might seem like the perfect candidate, but unfortunately, it is known to turn the mercury into this weird sand, which is a pain to deal with, and it is the reason why I can't use it. Copper should work much better, but I felt like the three pieces of cable just wouldn't be enough, so I searched some more and found this old copper pipe, it looked alright, so I cut out a piece of it, drilled a small hole through it, and assembled this really amateur looking contraption, which holds the copper in place and feels really well onto a beaker. So now that I had made the Mercury Creation and Collection System 5000, I had to fill it up with my Mercury Chloride, and to do that, I got one of the two containers that I have, and now it was time to open it. I was really scared to do that, and the pictograms really didn't help me. After a while of hesitation, I opened the container, and now I had to transfer the scary powder into the beaker. I was really afraid of me spilling some of it, as I often tend to do, so to help myself, I decided to first pour some water into the container. This should dissolve some of the mercury chloride, it is not too soluble in water, so I will have to do a few rounds, but the whole mercury making reaction also has to happen in water, so I figured that this would be the best way. After pouring in the water, I capped the container and nervously shook it to make sure that the solution is saturated, I then poured it into the contraption and immediately the copper took on a silvery tint. I repeated this process a few more times to get all of the copper submerged, and by the time I had finished doing this, there was a nice layer of something silvery on the copper surface. The reaction going on here is just a single displacement, the copper reacts with the mercury chloride to form copper chloride and elemental mercury, which should fall as some shiny droplets when enough is made. The mercury produced will be a little contaminated with copper because of a phenomenon known as amalgamation, it occurs because mercury being a liquid metal can dissolve many different metals to form alloys or so-called amalgams, the process of amalgamation has historically been used in mining for gold or silver, and today amalgams of mercury are mainly used for repairing teeth in the form known as dental amalgam. Some metals can resist being amalgamated by mercury, and one of them is iron, which was historically used to contain mercury for transport. The process of amalgamation 
is also useful in chemistry to remove oxide layers from metals like aluminum, which makes them useful in many more chemical reactions than they normally are. Anyway, after letting the copper and mercury chloride react for a day, nothing seemed to happen, which worried me quite a lot. I thought that using some heating and steering would help, but it turned out that it did completely nothing. To try and speed up the reaction, I added some really high surface area copper wire to the solution to see if it would help, but after waiting another day, there was no mercury present. I tried diluting the solution because maybe the copper chloride couldn't dissolve, but that also did nothing, so I declared this method trash and had to find something else. I really don't know why it didn't work, because from a chemical point of view it should, but I didn't have time to think about it, because I had a hot solution of a toxic mercury salt sitting in a beaker, and I didn't know what to do with it. After some thinking, I came up with the idea of using aluminum, which should also be possible, and I saw a few people do that with other mercury salts, so I decided to give it a try. I poured a part of the mercury chloride solution into a different beaker and added some aluminum foil. At first nothing seemed to happen, but after a while the solution started bubbling and turned grey. The reaction going on here is similar to the previous one, the aluminum being the more reactive metal displaces the mercury to form aluminum chloride but this reaction has a little bit of a twist, because the formed mercury deletes the oxide layer from aluminum by amalgamation, allowing it to react with water to form hydrogen, aluminum hydroxide and lots of heat, and that is the reason why this reaction is such a mess. The hydrogen produced by the reaction also makes this thing a fire hazard, and together with the fact that there is mercury present, it is like a cherry on top of a cake. Anyways, this reaction seems to be at least progressing and producing some mercury that I can scoop out using a pipette. It unfortunately isn't ideal, it produces a ton of mercury waste that they have to store in a lot of plastic bottles and will eventually have to process or give to a waste disposal company, the yield also probably isn't too great but it's the only thing I've got. I continued repeating the process of dissolving the mercury chloride and reacting it with aluminum foil, I also put the beaker in the plastic container for safety and after a few rounds, I was left with some shiny mercury metal. It was still a very small amount and to increase it, I processed the rest of the mercury chloride solution from earlier, the mercury that came out of it still had some copper in it due to the amalgamation, and after sitting in water for a while, the mercury developed a lovely golden crust, which made it look like liquid gold, so now I am officially an alchemist. Also, the reason why mercury has to be stored underwater is because at room temperature and pressure, it very slowly evaporates, and breathing in the fumes well isn't very good for your health. Mercury is very poisonous due to it being a heavy metal, if it enters your body, it can really scrap your nervous system, however, its metal form is generally considered pretty safe, because when ingested, it still has a chance of going through your digestive system intact. The fun begins with mercury salts, especially the water-soluble ones, because they can easily enter your blood flow and do a ton of damage. However, the most dangerous type of mercury is organomercury, which is mercury bonded to carbon, such as in for example dimethylmercury. Organomercury compounds are often a liquid and can easily dissolve in fat, and since your brain is mostly fat, you can guess where this is going. They can go through your gloves and skin in seconds, and there's been a lot of accidents related to them, and thank god that I don't have to work with them. Anyway, after making the mercury for 2 hours, I still wasn't even halfway through, so to speed everything up, I got another reaction vessel in the form of this Erlenmeyer flask, and now it felt like I was running a little mercury factory. After a whole day of hard work, I had finally processed all of the mercury chloride, and I was now left 
with a considerable amount of some very dirty mercury, along with three bottles of waste, which I poured into a large plastic container where it will wait to be processed. I also managed to recover some mercury that I missed from it, which was really nice, and now I had to clean it up. The best way to do that would be to carry out a vacuum distillation, but considering that I only work with a small amount and don't want to deal with boiling mercury, I had to clean it chemically. The main impurity in my mercury is copper, left over from the first try at making it. There is also some aluminum and a lot of other trace metals, which really take away from the mercury's shininess and its movability. To start removing the impurities, I first prepared a dilute solution of a chemical called potassium permanganate, which is this insanely purple oxidizing agent, washed the mercury with some distilled water and poured the permanganate solution onto it. I then let it react for a few minutes. The potassium permanganate should oxidize most of the metal impurities present into their oxides, hopefully without destroying the mercury because of the low concentration, and after a few minutes of reacting, it made everything look much worse than before, but I actually expected that. For the next step, I drained off the permanganate solution and again washed the mercury with distilled water. I also prepared a second solution, this time consisting of dilute nitric acid, and poured it onto the mercury. The nitric acid should react with the metal oxides made by the potassium permanganate and make them water soluble, and similarly to the potassium permanganate, in this dilute form, it should leave the mercury intact. After the washings, the mercury looked much better than before, it still had some junk floating on it, which I wanted to remove, and to do that, I sucked everything into a syringe, made a makeshift cotton filter, and passed the mercury through it straight into a vial, which looked and sounded really satisfying. I then left it to sit for a few days, and when I came back, the mercury looked really bad once again, so I had to clean it up for the second time. I really didn't want to use the potassium permanganate and cotton filters, so I just dumped some dilute nitric acid onto it, and it dealt with the oxide impurities surprisingly quickly. It also made this nice bubbling effect, and when I felt that the mercury was nice and clean, I removed the nitric acid, and was finally left with a vial of some clean and shiny mercury metal. After years of seeing it in chemistry videos, it really felt magical to behold its beauty in real life, it really looks like silvery water, it was even named after it, because its periodic table symbol HD extends to the word hydrogerum, made from Greek words meaning water and silver. Mercury is also incredibly dense, being 13 and a half times denser than water, allowing it to even float something that normally shouldn't be floated, such as this piece of steel. Being so dense, it also makes this really interesting sound upon being shaken around, and it makes me really nervous about the structure integrity of the vial, especially because its density makes moving it around a really interesting experience that is pretty hard to describe. Also, since it is a metal, it conducts electricity very well, and that makes it find a use in a lot of tilt switches or relays. Metallic mercury is also kind of okay to touch, upon contact with my finger it just feels cold, and now I see why people really like to play with it. When it comes to the yield, I managed to make 57.4 grams of it, which isn't a lot, considering the 200 grams of mercury chloride that I started with, and that means that I will have to recover a lot of the mercury from my waste. To store it for a long time, I put the vial into a steel can, which will make use of the fact that iron resists being amalgamated by mercury, so even if the vial breaks, I should still be fine. I will use this mercury in a lot of future videos to do all kinds of cool stuff, like the real pharaoh serpent demonstration or the thermochromic mercury iodide. And you know what's also very cool while being completely free and easy? Today's sponsor Brilliant. 
Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data and computer science in a fun and easy way covering everything from basic to advanced topics in thousands of interactive lessons customized to let you learn at your own pace. Using Brilliant, you can learn by doing such as in their amazing thing in code course that I personally use to expand my skills in computer science. It lets you solve real world problems like designing apps or writing code with ease. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer completely free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash amateur chemistry or just click the link in the description. The first 200 of you to sign up using my link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, also big thanks go to my patrons, especially Isaac Von Liu, Lorenzo and Dangerous Lab, as well as R2D2, Riley Replogu, Joseph Kudi and MI for supporting my channel. If you would also want to support my work and gain access to exclusive content, you can consider becoming a Patreon and see you guys in the next video.